you've heard of it, haven't you? Cruelty, pain, suffering, violation, deceit, all are transient in a fake world, built on a whim and destroyed on a whim. Tell me, then, have you met them? Those whom you help along your way, those whom you shared your most intimate moments with, those whom you refused to let go of when it was time to part ways. Tell me, the happiness you seek, did you know it doesn't exist? Welcome, or welcome back to the channel. If you've seen the trailer to this video that I posted a few days ago, you probably wondered what entire nation was I smoking to have made that. And well, you are in your right mind to raise an eyebrow or two, especially at the massive list of trigger warnings you had to go through to get here. Games like Black Souls are rarely even brought up. Hell, Black Souls isn't even on YouTube's database as a game. So what's the fuss about? What is Black Souls? Well, buckle up friends, this is gonna be a long one. Also, obvious spoiler warning for Black Souls and Black Souls 2. If you wish to experience the games yourself, pause the video and go over to DL site where you can grab both. Or, if you're feeling like boarding a few ships and hiding a couple of treasures on an island, maybe, uh, check the comment section in case someone decides to put down a map to a buried treasure. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Black Souls is an RPG H game developed by Eeny Meeny Miny Mo. And you can already tell by the art style that it is not your typical GRPG hero game. In fact, you may as well scrap the idea of this game being an H game at once, if it wasn't for the sex scenes being, uh, well, sex scenes. The game is a psychological horror RPG, disguised as an eroge as bait. Trust me, you are not playing this game to bust a nut. Oh no, by the time you're done playing Black Souls, something else inside you will be busted. The game starts with you in a library and a cute little girl sitting opposite of you asking you for your name, your class, and whether you want sex scenes or not. If you type in Grim with a double M as your name, the girl explodes, and a second voice comes in, saying that they were sure they wiped your memory, and that they can always just try again, before you're kicked out to the title screen again. Great, you are an undead, a hideous creature with your body falling apart and rotting. You wake up in a cell, just like another game that has the word souls in its title. You are locked in and can't escape, until suddenly, a white knightess comes to your rescue. Or not, she was just here to kill the petroleum pigmen, but uh, she acknowledges you still maintain your sanity and leaves the corpse with the key within an arm's reach, so that you can try to escape on your own. You open the door and begin searching for the exits, and after dodging a few enemies, you reach a staircase that leads you outside. There, you meet the Knightess again. She introduces herself as Jean d'Arc, and she tells you that the world is in ruins. It's a cursed fog devours everything very slowly, and that those who are afflicted with the fog become demon beasts, mindlessly violent creatures. She and you decide to team up 
and continue to make your way out of the ruined castle until you make it to safety. You stop for a brief moment to catch your breath and exchange a few words. She tells you of her mission to get to the bottom of this mess and save everyone for her holy mission of her holy lord. And she asks you to lend her your strength. After all, she believes that even a filthy abomination, such as an undead, can still be a hero. You get to either promise her to help, or stay silent. Whichever one you choose grants you one more line of dialogue before... You see, this is the kind of stuff modern games are afraid to do. The fact that you just only met her, and she was slowly growing on you, and forming a bond with you, despite your irregular form, only for her and all her hopes and dreams to get incinerated in an instant right before your eyes. Oh yeah, this game doesn't pull any punches, and I'm all here for it. But here you are. Now you stand, facing Hellkaiser, the drake who incinerated your companion in a single breath attack. What chance do you stand against such a monstrosity? A meager undead with nothing to his name, kept to rot in a cell for eternity. Was this really the end of your miserable existence? Okay, let's not lie to ourselves. I played this game before. And even though it's really difficult for those who have no idea what they're doing, I am not one of those people. <laughs> but first, let's talk about combat. You have your normal attacks, your mastered skills, these have buffs, special attacks, and most importantly, evade and parry. These two skills are the bread and butter of Black Souls 1 combat. Certain attacks can be parried, so you take no damage and deal some damage back to the opponent. Certain attacks can only be dodged or blocked, and certain attacks will just straight up blast you no matter what. The trick is to know what to do in response to each move. There is also sorcery if you like magic, which is OP in this game, and the aforementioned block to mitigate some damage from the next attack. Also, beneath your enemy's portrait and right to your character's status menu, you can also see the speed of each combatant. The turns will be decided by which bar fails up first. That's why speed is very important in this game, since it can basically allow you to have multiple turns in a row. Anyways, for the Hellkai Drake, I, I, I mean Hellkaiser, all of his attacks are payable, so you take no damage from them and deal damage back to the opponent, except one charge attack that he telegraphs by having a status effect and skipping one of his turns. But even then, that attack can be dodged. So, we kill him without taking any damage. Nice! After defeating him, we are transported to the holy forest. A small black rabbit, called Prayer Master, greets us, telling us that it seems we have something to do. He senses the resolve coming from the player character, but he cannot tell whether it's from determination to save the world, or to rule over all mankind. He doesn't care regardless, he says. If you have souls, he is willing to aid you through converting them into strength. He is our level up person, and serves as a shop too. We level up, but before we leave, 
he gives us another important piece of information. To seek a fairy known as Leaf, as she isn't like the other fairies, and that she ought to be of use to us. And he's right. The other fairies hanging around the forest are not only completely useless to us at the moment, but also racist. We also see a person sitting next to a wooden log, a crestfallen hero, or so the game introduces him. We tell him that we seek the lost empire, the bed of the castle that causes the fog, and he kindly tells us the exact path we need to take to reach it. But first, he suggests that we go see the witch living in the forest of Abandon, as she surely would help us. So, we bid him farewell and proceed to explore a bit more before we start heading towards the Lost Empire. We find a set of stairs that lead to an underground area. A sound of knocking echoes in the background. Then we find a door that leads towards the dungeon. Empty, with so many rooms and a strange white and sticky substance found around the area almost like it's waiting to host some certain types of prisoners for a certain reason we go back up and head up north where we spot a fairy and we immediately have an urge inexplicable almost impossible to resist we feel a strong bloodlust, and we really, really want to kill her. But we manage to control it, tame it, revealing ourselves to her. To our surprise, she seems to recognize us. It's you, she says, as if she was expecting us or something. How strange. She introduces herself as Leaf, and realizes that we're heading to the Lost Empire but also seems so awfully nonchalant about it. She says that it's too dangerous to go out alone and teaches us a spell to summon her in combat if we need her help. Then, before she leaves, she makes a very disturbing comment. You're free, I mean it. If you don't like someone, you're free to kill them. If there is a girl you like, feel free to take her by force. This country is destined to perish and disappear anyways, right? right? Seeing the shock on our faces, she laughs it off at a joke, then disappears into the nearby woods. We stay still for a moment, thinking about what she said. She was right. We were free. We could do whatever we want. Even Prayer Master fessed it too. He was well aware that we could either be a hero and save the world, or be the biggest threat to what remains of its denizens. An undying creature, returned by the grave, will always come back, no matter what happens to our corpse. There is no real way to stop us anymore, especially after we linked with the bonfire of the holy forest. Before, we were locked away, but now even if they lock us away, we could simply take our own lives and we'd return to the nearest bonfire. We cannot be contained anymore. But is, is this really what we want? Jean, the knightess who saved us, did she really sacrifice her everything just to unleash a calamity on this world? Would we really trample on her memory like that? The choice is within your hands. This is the aspect of horror that this game offers. Yes, there are terrifying monsters about, abominations beyond human comprehension. But the true monster is none other than yourself, not the character you play as, you, the player. You have the total freedom to do whatever you want with these people you meet, exactly as Leaf said. We make our way through the forest of Abandoned, where you find a strange trail of items. A player doing a blind run of this game would pick them up which would instantly ruin a whole questline. These are breadcrumbs, left behind in a pattern. For some reason or the other, we follow the trail and we find the witch's house. We open the door and we are greeted with the twins, Hansel and Gretel. 
If you pick up any of those breadcrumbs they left behind, it would have caused them to transform into hideous monsters and attack you on sight. You, the player, would have unknowingly caused their demise out of sheer curiosity. You approach the twins and try talking to them. And... Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey! You better not misclick if you haven't saved in a while. You stop yourself, reminding yourself of what is your mission, and what brought you to this place to begin with. You speak to the brother instead, and he is much friendlier than his sister. He asks you to become his friend, and you smile, agreeing to his request, or denying it. He replies by thanking you kindly, if you agree, and telling you that it's just him and his sister, so he doesn't have that many friends. Loneliness. Yes, you've given this child a ray of hope. A new friend, huh? You think you're up for that? You're an undead. An abomination. Your soul is black. Your origin is villainy. You are destined to... Oh, for fuck's sake! The child asks for candy, and you just so happen to have one on your person. You give it to him, and watch him share it with his sister happily before you leave as fast as you can, exploring the rest of the house. You can't imagine what would have happened had you given in to your undead urges. You find a set of stairs that lead you upwards, where you meet the witch Dorothy. Once again, you find yourself at a struggle with your own urges. Depending on whichever choice you make, you either befriend Dorothy and become her apprentice, or she ends up in the dungeon back in the holy forest after you had your way with her. Which for the sake of getting the current ending, we would become her apprentice, and we tell her our goal of reaching the lost empire. She then informs you that you would only get caught and used as a toy for the demonic princesses. But after Dorothy sees your resolve, she reluctantly gives you a key necessary to progress further, without any further elaboration on who the princesses are and why they would want to catch us. We simply shrug it off and leave the house coming across a strange man named Sinner Wilt. We catch him talking to himself, and he asks us whether we are of the Black Trial. We tell him that we have no idea what he's talking about, and he calms down, then asks for our help. He says that he's the family of Hansel and Gretel, which is weird because they clearly told us that they were abandoned and had no one else. Then he says that those two are reflected with the fog, and that they would soon turn into demon beasts. So he gathered souls and is willing to feed them to the children so they won't turn. However, he is too nervous and can't gather the courage to face them. So he tells us of a girl named Elma in the town ahead who sells a certain medicine that would be able to help him. Then he gives us a bunch of souls to go get it for him. What a strange man with a strange request. Well, he seems to be trustworthy. Surely he's a good guy, not just some creep, right? Well, we go through the sewers and reach the town, Rottenburg, where we are immediately attacked by a woman who transformed right in front of our eyes, muttering something about going to a ball, but the fog stopping her, right before she becomes a hideous monster. This area is rotten for a reason. It seems that even before the fog was a thing, this place was run down and unsavory. Prostitution was so common that it was a rarity to not see a woman who was a prostitute in the city streets. But now with the fog about, all the sex workers, tired of being treated like objects for the lust of sinful men, were easy prey to turning, and eventually the city became infested with demon beasts. We find a store, and inside was the little girl Sinner Well told us about. Her name is Elma, the match seller. She welcomes you and offers to sell you a match. Confused, you purchase one, and then it hits you. The town was crawling with prostitutes. Sexual immorality was commonplace, so of course there would be a need for a medication that enhances one's sexual urges. A match that ignites your sexual drive rather than anything else. Why did Welt need this? We rush back to him and hand him the medicine, but before we could ask, he quickly gulps it down and rushes into the house. 
We chase after him and... Yes, it was as we suspected. He was but a monster, both before and after he had turned. Luckily, we were there to save the children. Otherwise, well, this is what would happen. I think you get the gist of it at this point. Almost every choice you make, no matter how minor or completely consequence-free does it look to you, most likely has consequences that you might not even realize. The journey of the undead continues, venturing across lands, meeting all kinds of people, and either being a complete psychopath and bringing more terror to this crumbling land, or a hero and bringing more hope to those who yet still need it. Throughout his journey, a name keeps repeating itself on his ears. No matter where he goes, Mary Sue, the goddess of the land that abandoned it for some reason or the other. He keeps the thought in the back of his head, finally reaching the entrance to the lost empire. But something was wrong. The door stands tall before him, sealed by a barrier. A monolith erected behind him with the ceiling writ engraved on it, slay the four demonic princesses, or be bound by covenant. And so, one journey ends for another one to begin. We seek out the demonic princesses, Rapunzel at the top of her tower, the frog princess at her bog, Snow White in her kingdom of eternal blizzard, and the little mermaid at the bottom of her underwater kingdom. All can be reasoned with, except Snow White, who requests that you kill the other three princesses to grant you her boon. Again, the choice is within your hands. So, you've slain every princess, every boss, and got every storybook from their remains. You remember the library you came across during your travels, and you go back to fill it. You put every book back on the shelves. 
from the musician of Bremen to the tale of the Sinbad to the beauty and the beast to Peter Pan every single book found its place on the library's shelves and finally it was done surely this is enough you can now reach a happy ending with your loved ones whom you've made along the way even Alice is pleased with you and she finally decides to show you what you've earned a message from Alice 01 the real Alice the first Alice You go and look at the door that has finally opened, and inside, more bookshelves. But that's impossible. You obtained all the books. You killed every... No. The shock is far too great. This can't be happening. They are your dearest friends, your companions. You can't do this. Not after you've managed to come this far. But you must. A force compels you. Willpower? Or simple curiosity? Maybe it was simply your undead instincts again. Your black soul stirs. You had to see this through to the end. So, one by one, you kill. Jeanne d'Arc, the one who freed you, and whom you brought back from the claws of death. The witch, Dorothy whom gave you the first push along the way. Goose, whom you confessed your love to. Elma, the little match seller whom you took under your wing for protection. Elizabeth Bathory, Red Hood, Catherine. And it was finally done. A switch appears on the wall next to you. You pull it. The world falls apart. Chaos ensues. Victoria, the maid you saved, stands in your way. You kill her, no second thoughts. You proceed to find Leaf, being assaulted by mutated fairies. You save her, and you feel it. Mary Sue is descending. With every step forward, you feel it in your bones. An incomprehensible being is descending. A familiar sensation. The Black Trial whom you've came to bout with. The Vanguard, Landimia, an unstoppable and undying, fearless opponent, chases you for the greatest sin of all. With your companion, the Black Condemner, Miranda, comes to your rescue. And she manages to convince her previous comrade in arms to back off. For now. You bid Miranda farewell and continue your way forward. This was it. The end of the journey. But there was no one here. Leaf is summoned to you, but the place was empty. No, you feel it. Mary Sue is definitely here, even if you can't see her. You simply needed to call out her name. Her true name? Or her fake name? You never get to know. As simply, she was alongside you all along, since the first time you woke up in that library, and she nonchalantly dismissed your attempt at recalling your memories, your real name, Grimm, your true identity, Lewis Carroll, and she took them all away from you. 
She made you into who you are, and crafted this world to make you into a protagonist of a story. But she didn't abide by the laws of authorship. No matter what, an author shouldn't place himself within the story. Yet, she did. And because of that, the world was falling apart since its birth. And naturally, as the mastermind behind this, she would never put herself in the shoes of an irrelevant character. You clench your fists, looking ahead at the being in front of you, and you shout. Leaf. Sadly, I can't show what happens after the fight, as the CG is a little too graphic for YouTube. But I can show another instance of it, if only briefly. All your suppressed urges, your anger, your violence, your hatred, your lust, everything that makes your soul black pours out of you at that very moment. Finally, you end Mary Sue, usurping her power as the author. All your friends, dead or alive, appear before you, and then the credits roll. Holy shit, what a fucking masterpiece. I was like a kid boarding a roller coaster while playing through this game, and I swear I literally am traumatized from it. I physically cannot play it again, even for the sake of getting footage for the video, because whenever I saw an image or heard a song which reminded me of what exactly happens in the story, I feel weak in the knees and immediately quit the game. And it's not only just this, it's the fact that this entirety of Black Souls 1 is only like a prologue to the events which happen in, in Black Souls 2. The game that not only hammers your shit in emotionally, but also mentally. In all my years, I've never played a game that made me physically afraid to play it again, except this one. Fear and Hunger who, Coffin of Andy and Lele who, this is the true queen of all RPG Maker horror games, and you're free to try to convince me otherwise in the comment section, though I doubt you can. 
I honestly don't know if I'll make a video about Black Souls 2, even though I really want to, but you guys know that it would be very unhealthy to the channel. At least if I do it immediately after this, or sometime soon. Maybe in the future when I finally grow back the balls to play through it again and handle the emotional damage, but for now, we wrap it up here. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe to help the channel grow and, and reach even more people who might be interested in similar content. And if you really want to support me, Imaginary Watcher, you can head to my newly made Patreon and get yourself a membership to have a lot of benefits while they're also directly contributing to making more of these videos and funding me to upgrade my setup. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around. しかし、二人は後ろを振り返ることなく戦場に向かった。この最初から悲劇だと決まっていた物語では、誰もそのことに迷ったり、動揺したりしていなかった。彼らがそうあったように、僕たちもそうである。